All right, folks, so what we have here, <clears throat> excuse me, is my 2003 Dodge Ram uh, 3.7 V6 five-speed truck. You can see I've got it on jack stands. Uh, let me get down underneath and show you what I'm working with here. All right, so drive line's out of it because my pinion gear is leaking. But... Upon inspection, I mean, yeah. So rather than mess around with uh, that, uh, I'm gonna go to LKQ and buy a whole new rear end. So this is going to be 2003 Dodge Ram rear end swap. First thing you're going to want to do is start by taking the wheels off. That's exciting. All right, so it is uh, the next morning. Make sure my eyebrows are on point. I do believe there's children that use the term on fleek. I still have no fucking clue what that means. Anyway, the girl's butt just keeps getting smaller and tighter. The things you see driving around your neighborhood. Don't worry, my wife looked before I did. Uh, um, it was there. It was there, yeah. yeah. Anywho, we are in the old uh, Subaru dumpster wagon. For those of you who may be new to this channel, uh, who are tuning in because you have a shitbox Dodge Ram that needs some love, we also have a shitbox Subaru that has had lots of love. Probably the most love of any car I've ever owned in my life. We've practically rebuilt this 20-year-old piece of shit. I think the only thing that's left to do on this car literally is uh, the other wheel bearing in the back. Anyway, I pay somebody to work on this thing. Uh, we're headed to LKQ. Uh, I'm going to spare you the uh, teardown process. Wow, it looks like the bridge is open. Imagine that every time. I'm going to spare you the uh, teardown process. I am going to show you around in the LKQ yard where I'm going. I'm going to show you the truck that the parts are coming off of uh, and break down the cost of what a rear end from the wrecking yard is going to end up costing you. Um, yeah, this guy is going to block the intersection. Mm -hmm. but, Asshole. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to spare you the uh, teardown process in the wrecking yard because it's going to be the exact same process at home. Um, and I'll get into more more depth and detail at home with the teardown process where I can actually set a tripod and, and not worry about uh, somebody taking it in the wrecking yard because oftentimes the wrecking yard is full of uh, deplorable people. Oftentimes. Might be like six of you in there that don't have one mouthful of teeth, but I still have all mine. They're not very pretty, but I still have them all. That's the important part. So, well, that person is Ubering in a Range Rover. <laughs> They have a Range Rover with a sticker that says Uber. I guess that's one way to make a car payment on an extremely overpriced piece of shit. <coughs> um, anyway, I'll catch up with you after we pay our $3 or whatever the hell it costs to get into LKQ and we locate uh, our donor vehicle. All right, so this is gonna be our, uh, our donor vehicle in the wrecking yard. I looked at the slip, they had four or five of them out here. This one's already half done. The shocks are disconnected. The bed's off of it, makes it easy to get to. So, who knows, maybe I'll dig around inside of this thing and there might be, hey, look at that, there's a light bar. Might be, uh, I need that trim piece, but I don't think it's in the budget for today. Wow. Yes. Flyby. Uh, we'll see how I'm feeling when I get uh, done ripping the rear end out of this thing um, <clears throat> whether or not I get into that so Whew. that was a lot of work I'm out of shape all right so if you don't know how to take the wheels off your truck you probably shouldn't uh, try to do this I'm gonna end up replacing the uh, discs on the back of this thing I'm pretty sure my wife's on the phone right now trying to get a price they're fairly well stuck to the hub um, 21 millimeter bolt here okay because you're gonna have to take the entire braking assembly uh, off of this axle and rather than undoing this and then undoing this I'm doing it at all at one time 
excuse the traffic in the background. Uh, and then you've got this little, I can't even see what I'm filming here, this little junction box here uh, where the brakes go in. You're going to want to undo those before you drop the calipers off of it. Jesus, all of a sudden it sounds like I'm on the side of a highway. Um, you want to undo your brake lines and make sure that you don't bend them any further. Um, and then you want to repeat the, part, the uh, process on the other side. So 21 millimeter with a breaker bar on there. And go for it. All right, so perhaps I should have shown this on the other side <clears throat> because it's on the top. But you got these, these e-brake cables. All right. And they literally just... You need two hands for it. I need to pull this cable this way. And this lever right there, I'm going to pull that at the same time, and it frees that up and it pulls right out of the slot. All right, so over here on the passenger side, you can see I um, actually had to disconnect the brake line from the caliper because it's a long formed brake line that you don't, I mean, you can bend it a little bit, but you don't want to get kinks in it. Um, but in order to get this assembly, this bracket, right here uh, has a 13 millimeter bolt it goes in right there next to the, uh, the shock here and you'll see on top right about there where my finger is uh, there's another 13 millimeter bolt where this whole um, assembly here this is e-brake cable uh, formed brake line and the electronics I think that's a speed sensor I could be mistaken. I'm not sure where this vehicle gets its uh, its reading for the speedometer itself. Uh, that might be that might be a differential uh, temperature sensor. If somebody knows, maybe you can comment down below. I'm not familiar with it. I've never pulled a rear end out of one of these before. Last time I pulled a rear end out of something was a uh, '69 Plymouth GTX in like 1995. <laughs> I don't do this very often, but um, that takes us to the shocks which are, uh, they are 21 millimeter inside and out. Uh, I've got two three foot breaker bars to get these things to break loose. They're a bitch. Um, this is an old crusty truck though. But that's my next, um, I've got the shock on the other side already disconnected, but you got your 21 millimeter bolts here, a 13 millimeter on top to release this. And you can see there's the, the uh, brake fitting itself that I disconnected so that I didn't bend that line. I am going to go get rotors soon because these won't come off. Uh, mineral oil, WD-40, they're not coming off and I don't have heat. And so they're 56 bucks a piece. That puts another, uh, mind you, this was a, I paid $220 for that other axle. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so disconnect that shock and then literally, well, there's another piece. I, I can't even see it, to be honest with you. I have to put my hand on it where the main brake comes in. You can see... Over there, what looks like an electrical loom, um, it goes that brake line goes up into something that's uh, like above the gas tank that feels like it has about a half inch fitting where it gets the brake fluid from the front of the vehicle and comes down and goes into that, that distribution box here. Hold on, let me show you that thing. Um, this junction box I showed it to you earlier. There, see this line here, it goes up maybe. Okay. I'm not sure if that's going to pick up on the camera or not, but you have to uh, you're going to have to unscrew it from this side, and there's a clip on it, and that's the main uh, brake down into this junction box, and then this here is actually the breather for the differential itself, and I can show you on this other one, still in the car, um, that's the clip that has to come off, and then, because this piece actually broke off of the other truck, this isn't part of it, this is welded to the frame itself so I'm gonna have to deal with that right now it feels it feels to be about a 13 millimeter all right and we get to u-bolts um, I've already taken the outside one off of the other side I'm gonna take the outside one off of this side at which time then I'm gonna remove that jack stand and put the floor jack um, well I still got yep yeah, I still got to figure that out but uh, I'm going to do one on each side and leave it and then get a floor jack underneath this thing so I can roll it out. Um, 
set it to the side, and then uh, essentially reverse the process to put the whole thing back in. But once I get into uh, new discs, I'll uh, I'll get into the, uh, the the parking brake assembly that's inside of here because there's actually an old school drum style brake, and the parking brake on this truck has never worked since I had it. Um, and the ones on the other ones, you can manually, but yeah, there's there's a drum brake assembly inside of there, non uh, non performance oriented, so it's cable driven. But uh, yeah, these are also a 21 millimeter. Uh, get a long breaker bar and lots of goo, because they're gonna fight you. All right, so I was mistaken. The uh, male piece that screws into that has exactly the same fitting as what's on this junction box right here. So it was a, a, a 12 millimeter is what fits on that. Uh, might be able to get away with putting a half inch on it maybe. Um, and then the little clip that was on there um, had a ridge on the top and I literally put a hammer on it, or a screwdriver, and hammered it off with a hammer. It flew over there somewhere. If it's lost, whatever, it goes through a hole. Um, worst case, I've got one on the other one, so not too worried about that. I am uh, on the other, um, on the donor rear end, because this hose had been hanging for however long. Um, I have a small air compressor. I don't, I don't have an air compressor that's big enough to run uh, air tools, but I'm going to blast air through that hose because I don't know if that comes off or not, and I'm not going to try to find out. Um, but I just want to make sure that that line is clean before I hook my brake lines uh, back up to it. So you'll see I've got the floor jack underneath of it, uh, supporting the uh, center section. And I'm working on getting these last two U-bolts, one on this side, one on that side, lower it down. And uh, that's taking it out. Just got to reverse it to put it back in. All right, so now that we're out here in better light, I'll show you something here. All right. Yeah. Fucking toast. All right, so getting this thing back up in there was uh, no small feat. Uh, you got to make sure there's a there's a pin. It comes down from the springs that I'm pretty sure is attached to that there that holds it all together. That um, goes into the pad. There's a hole in the middle of it there. Um, you got to make sure that that seats up in there. And then uh, I'm going to give this thing all the ugga duggas in the world with that shitty little three eighths impact. And then I'm going to put a, a, a three foot breaker bar on it to uh, snug them down. But you want to do them evenly, like one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn per, so that they're, you know. They're even. All right, folks, that's it for today. <laughs> I've gotten all of this in this video that you've seen up till now accomplished in one day um, with pretty basic hand tools and a uh, tiny little 3 8 uh, impact that's only got a 100 pound, 100 pound foot of torque. It, it helps with some things, but not with others. Uh, I'm at the point now where I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm hooking things back up incorrectly. And I need to go back and watch my own footage that I filmed to figure this out because I, I need to figure out. I think that I'm an idiot. I, I ran that e-brake line behind and underneath the leaf spring. I think I need to run it over the top of the leaf spring. So I'm going to go take a shower um, because I look like I've been jerking off a fucking coal miner all day. Um, but yeah, that's back up in there. So... Uh, I got to figure out what I'm doing still with the uh, e-brake cables. Um, I did get the uh, I got that blown out and rehooked and the clip back on it, so that's <clears throat> where the main supply of brake fluid comes down into that junction box. <clears throat> uh, I still have to go get rotors, but that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, I'm not I'm not going anywhere else um, this evening or doing anything else with this. I got all day tomorrow to do this, but. Uh, Anyway, that's it for now. See you tomorrow. All right, so I had to go to three different parts stores to uh, find rotors. But uh, literally, those just slide over the top of that little drum brake assembly. I still got to fix the uh, backing plate on this one because it got smushed in transport. This is the uh, uh, parking brake assembly here. That Literally, you just got a cable back here that just pulls, and it's on the inside of the disc. But yeah, I gotta do something about that.
All right, the uh, brakes are on and they are bled. This being the short side, um, didn't take much. It was pretty much one little in the beginning. But the long side, uh, about four times I cracked it open until I got a good solid stream without any bubbles in it because it's a longer, it's about a three and a half foot line. So now all that's left to do is put the tires on this bitch and go drive it. Oh, uh, yeah, and I put the drive line in as well. All right, folks, we are back together 100%. Uh, that's old brake fluid that was leaking there. Uh, that's a little bit of squirt on the cover from when I was bleeding the other side. But, uh, yeah, if you do this, definitely uh, after a couple of days, you want to uh, probably pull the wheels back off of it again and uh, double check that those U-bolts are tight. Uh, crawl over there and make sure that the uh, four uh, driveline bolts are tight. Um, I hit those down at about 100 pounds on those, which is probably excessive, but I'd rather be excessive than not have enough. But, there it is. It's done. Thanks for watching.